This video was made possible by Blue Apron. The first 100 people to sign up with the link in the description will get three free fresh and delicious meals from Blue Apron. Last month while hanging out with Minute Physics, Smarter Every Day and 3 Blue 1 Brown at VidCon, we started exploring the possibility that there are parts of World War I era German warships flying to the edge of our solar system aboard the Voyager satellite. It was a pretty fascinating story but none of us could confirm whether it was true. I became a little obsessed with the idea and wanted to share my journey to uncover whether there is any truth to the story. So first of all, why would there be any parts of German warships used in satellites at all? When it comes to creating sensitive sensors like Geiger counters, it is vital that they are constructed from materials with minimal radioactivity. After all, Geiger counters are designed to detect and measure radioactivity. And if the materials they are made from are producing radiation, then their readings will be inaccurate. Any steel produced after the Trinity test, the world's first nuclear detonation in 1945, is contaminated with radionuclides like cobalt-60. After this first test there has been over 2000 nuclear tests, many of them above ground, that have elevated the world's background radiation to a peak of 0.15 millisieverts per year above natural levels in 1963. This contamination gets introduced to steel through the refining process, which I spoke about in more detail in my History of Iron and Steel video, as air is pumped through molten pig iron to oxidize the excess carbon and impurities, allowing them to be removed. As this occurs, the contaminated air deposits the cobalt-60 in the iron, and thus elevates its radioactivity. It is possible to use pure oxygen in this process in a clean room environment, but it's expensive. A much cheaper source of low background steel is from warships that sunk prior to these first nuclear tests, the most famous source being the scuttled German fleet of battleships in Scapa Flow, Scotland. Following the surrender of Germany in World War I, the German army was instructed to hand over all their U-boats to the Allied forces. However, an agreement for the fate of the German surface fleet could not be found, and it was decided that they would be moored with a skeleton crew of sailors until peace negotiations had finalised. But on June 21st, 1919, the German Admiral Ludwig von Rutter decided to take matters into his own hands, signalling his men to scuttle the ships and thus prevent them from being used by the Allies. 52 of the 74 battleships moored in Scapa Flow sunk. The cost of salvaging these ships was deemed too expensive at the time, as there was a glut of scrap metal following the war. The first of the scuttled ships was raised in 1923 to clear shipping routes, and a further 38 ships were raised and scrapped until the outbreak of World War II. The remaining seven ships have had small-scale salvage operations to recover the low background steel that has been shielded from background radiation under 47 meters of water. These ships are now protected under the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Areas Act, and you can actually explore the wrecks with a diving permit. So are there parts of steel from these wrecks on Voyager 1? This is a claim that has been circling the internet for quite some time, but I could find no source of proof for it. So I started investigating further to see if there is any possibility that parts of Voyager 1 would need the steel. The first thing to note is that steel will be used only when it's absolutely needed, as it's heavy. Lighter materials like aluminium and titanium are much more common. So I began scouring the internet for construction details. I found this fantastic document released by NASA in 1980 detailing the construction of Voyager 1. There were no radiation sensors included in the list of sensors, which was the first strike to the likelihood of the story. Next I searched for references to steel, and on page 7 I found that the shielding for the radioisotope thermoelectric generators were constructed from a steel alloy and gold foil. But the radioisotope thermoelectric generator itself is powered by radiation. It would have no need for low background steel. The support boom was built from steel and titanium, but for the same reasons it's highly unlikely that these parts would have any use for low background steel. These were the only references for steel I could find, so it's highly unlikely there's any material from these ships aboard the Voyager 1, but there is a more likely scenario that they may have been used in Explorer 1. The Explorer 1 was the first satellite ever launched by the US, launching aboard a Jupiter C rocket in 1958, 20 years before Voyager. It did include radiation sensors on board, as its primary mission objective was to investigate radiation levels in space and evaluate whether a human could survive a space mission. The instrument section of the satellite was skinned with steel, which could well have been low background steel. Explorer 1 oddly found a much lower cosmic ray level than expected which Dr. James Van Allen theorized being caused by the sensors becoming saturated by a very high radiation region around Earth, caused by charged particles from solar wind becoming trapped in the Earth's magnetic field. This belt was later confirmed and named the Van Allen Belt. 
So there is a small chance that steel from these old German warships made it to space, but short of speaking directly with the engineers that designed the Explorer 1, it's next to impossible to confirm the source of their steel. Thankfully, the need to salvage this low background steel from old warships is diminishing, thanks to treaties bringing an end to the testing of nuclear weapons and the short half-life of radioactive isotopes like Cobalt-60, which has a half-life of 5.26 years. Background radiation has fallen dramatically from the highs of 1963, falling all the way from 0.15 millisieverts per year to 0.005 millisieverts per year, above natural levels. If you are as busy as I am, you probably don't have a lot of time to plan and shop for healthy meals, but you can get great fresh meals delivered right to your doorstep with Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send a refrigerated box to your home with the exact ingredients you need that are healthy and sourced from great local suppliers. So even if you're working late, you can come home and cook a delicious meal for you and one to three other people, who will be really impressed with your cooking skills as each meal comes with an easy to follow recipe. What's better is that the first 100 people to sign up with this link will get 3 free meals with their first order. They have a range of meals you can pick from that change from week to week including vegetarian options. Give it a go, there's no commitments and you can skip or cancel the service at any time. But I think you'll want to keep going after you taste your first delicious home cooked meal. As usual, thanks for watching and thank you to all my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel. This month I launched a few new rewards including behind the scenes and director commentaries and released an expense report that any of you can view right now so you can see where I am spending the money on the channel.